Hey everybody, how hey, y'all doing day. today? I'm Tanya. I'm Charles. It is so good to be here before you, and this is your One Church Recap. This is your One Church Recap. Yes. Yeah. yes. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh I hope my you gosh. are. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's yes. Day to Happy you, Miss Tanya, yes. and to all of our fathers and mothers and fathers again. <laughs> yes, again. Yes, you're the influential men in our community, and we say thank you. Yes, we say thank you. Um, it is just such an honor to see you all pro- be before your families and your communities. Yes. And just hope being you who your you day. are. And hoping that they enjoy their day. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So yes. we're going to get right to it with our weekly recap. Um, uh, this Sunday, but last Sunday, Bishop Chris brought forth an empowering message where he gave the re- the introduction to horticulture, which is the next series or the series that we're uh, in now. Uh, you all, he really set this up. Um, Pastor Tanya has some points that she wants to bring out. I have some things that I want to share with you too. We're not going to, as they say, be before you long, but we just want to enlighten you to jump into this message if you haven't already heard it, but listen to it again. There's some great points that we want mm-hmm. to get into your spirit so that as we're moving mm-hmm. forward with this next uh, mm-hmm. few months of this teaching of horticulture, right. we'll be able to be in the right mindset and the right perspective. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Too. Absolutely. And just really briefly, um, one of the things that I like that Bishop Chris uh, Christopher Paul started out with is when we think about a hoarder, we think of somebody who is dirty. Mm -hmm. We don't think about the other aspects, you know, what happened for that person to get here. He's going to walk us through that, but we're going to just start with a quick pointer here where sometimes uh, where he talks about when we get into pain and sometimes we hold on to that pain. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we hold on to that pain is very very influential. So we'll just start right around there. All right, here we go. Thank you. Come on, put it in the comments. I need you to know that I need to know that you're hearing me horticulture sometimes I'm holding on to things that I should have let go sometimes I'm holding on to things out of fear of loss I'm holding on to things out of an apocalyptic mentality I'm holding on thank you Kimona thank you Cheryl hallelujah I'm holding on to things sometimes because the pain can be so great how many of you know sometimes if you slam your finger in the door or some type of pain the first thing we do is what we hold on to it right and even though holding on to it doesn't necessarily make us feel better it seems to somehow constrict the pain Sometimes it seems to constrict the pain into one specific place at least. Well, sometimes we hold on to try to keep the pain from spreading. Wow. Wow. That was amazing to me. It was so amazing to me because that is true. Sometimes we hold on to that pain Mm -hmm. because we don't want to spread. We want to localize it to one area and we don't want our other, you know, extremities. We don't want our body to register that. So we'll hold on to it. And and, and like you said, I think you alluded earlier to some relationships. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we'll hold on to relationships We'll hold on to places in our lives Mm -hmm, that, you know, mm -hmm. have called us pain and we won't let those things go because we don't want to deal with the what you know, what's going to come after that. But it was so powerful that he said that um, on Sunday. And again, it was just amazing. It was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, Mm -hmm. when you grab on to that pain, that that pressure point, you want to constrict the bleeding. You Mm want to make sure that that flow, Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it clots up. You know, so that you will hopefully won't feel the pain. Hopefully my squeeze is stronger than the hurt to get my mind off of all of this other things, all of what's else, everything <laughs> else that's happening. You know, right, so right, right. I, I, I think that was a great point, Pastor Tanya. Again, if you haven't listened back to the word, everyone, I want you to get back in there. Uh, that that point was around like the 20 minute mark. Mm-hmm. Praise and worship had already happened. You know, Pastor Tanya wanted to get some PT. Oh, Lord. Um, some screen time. Well, what, what's the next point that we got, <laughs> uh, Pastor Tanya, that we're getting ready to um, go to? I just wanted to also go on to, let's see. About how everyone has a backstory, and that was mm-hmm. around um, Mark 26. We're gonna go to 26 minutes in and just okay. listen to this briefly. And so I want you to open up your mind and your spirit at this point, because sometimes we're hoarding and don't know it, right? And so sometimes you know how it is when you see a person and you remember what they said or what they did to you because you're hoarding. As I always say, a lot of times people can take something from you and you will not remember it. But if someone, I'm sorry, if someone takes something from you, you remember it. 
But at the same time, if people give something to you, guess what that means? Uh, you'll forget it, right? We are pre-programmed somehow or another to remember what was negative and the trauma that is taking place. And I'm finding that a lot of times in church culture, we don't deal with the trauma. We just deal with the rules, right? We don't deal with the trauma. We just deal with where you are right now and what you should be doing right now. But everyone has a backstory. Everyone has a backstory. How many of you will admit that right now? There's a story to my pain. There's a story to where I am. There's a reason, amen. And guess what? And it's still working together for your good. But what we don't want is a culture of people that can confess the word, a culture of people that can speak the right apologetics, a culture of people that know the word in and out, but we're still dealing with so much personal drama, so much much personal pain, so much personal, personal backstory, clutter. We're moving into new relationships with same pain. We're moving into new situations, dealing with the result of trauma. And so today I want you to put it in the comments. We're going to deal with the trauma. Put that in the comments. We're dealing with the trauma. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, what do you say Bad to that? Story. What do you say to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Everyone has yeah. a backstory. And, and the backstory is super important. And as a filmmaker and major in filmmaking, um, as a, when you're creating this, uh, a character description, a character profile, you may not know exactly why that person, that character does what it's doing until you find out the backstory, mm -hmm. until you start seeing the flashbacks, until right. you start seeing, oh my God, this is what happened to this particular character that mm -hmm. put them in this frenzy place or mm -hmm. in this hoarding place or this place that they did, they wanted to, uh, uh, yes. they internalize uh -huh. um, the things that happened to them and then they didn't want to uh, expose it and then their actions reflected differently. So, that so is really good here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you brought that point out, mm -hmm. Pastor Tanya. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. was really good. It was really good. I really enjoyed um, everything about it. You know, we, like you said, we took some bites from before he right. even started. But, you know, again, make sure that you're grabbing this. This information is available to you. This message is available to everybody. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. please make sure that you're on the lookout for your emails. Yeah, you emails, can get it in your emails now. Yeah. Your, make sure you're getting that information. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. was a good point. So how about you, Bishop Charles? Do you have anything else that you wanted to share yes, before we... Before we conclude on today, there's yes. one other point I want us to go to. It's down at the 55 mark. Right. Um, yeah, let's let's go take a listen there. When we look at certain situations and certain pains and certain things that have happened in our lives, some of us would have what we would call a squalor or a scuba line. We have things that we've had finished, but we're still holding on to it. I'm a victim. Right. I can identify with that certain things that I started on and it's literally dying in front of me. Right. Because I did not give it the focus that I should to nurture it to life. I want to use the food truck for an example. You all, I'm going to tell you something. This food truck thing has been more difficult. I thought pastoring is the most difficult thing. I'm just kidding. But I'm telling you. I've never done anything this difficult before or from taking something that was something else, bringing it into full remodel, rehab, kind of like putting it on the potter's wheel, right? Kind of making it something that it was never before and bringing it all the way to completion. There were times in there where I felt like I couldn't finish it. I felt like it was taking too long. I felt like it was too much. And if I wasn't careful, watch this, the food truck could have been something else that was a part of my scuba line or my squalor. Something that I started, that I didn't finish, that is literally dying right in my presence. Why? Because the longer I take for it to manifest. The longer I allow, y'all know I'm talking good to you. The longer I allow it to be before I close this out, before I finish it, the more probability of me spontaneously aborting the manifestation of this, the probability of that increases. 
What I'm essentially saying is the longer it takes for me to do it, the longer I'm procrastinating, then the, guess what? My focus is not going to be as intentional, right? My determination is not going to be as intentional right and so now what we've got to do is look at this now and say what i can't afford to do is allow my vision my dreams my passions the things that god had inside of me to become a part of my scuba line something around me that's emitting the stitch of procrastination as I told you before, there comes a time where you can no longer take that word. You have such great potential as a compliment. Because it's really time for true activation of that which is inside of you. Glory be to God. So I want you to put this in the comments right now. I refuse to let my procrastination kill my vision. I refuse to let my procrastination kill my vision. And see, the thing about it is that there is a difference between dreams and visions, right? Dreams are great, wonderful thoughts and aspirations, but vision is something where you actually take that dream, analyze it, sit down, take a moment, meditate, become strategic, and begin to say what? I am now going to take steps in the direction that God would have me to go, in a direction that's going to have me seeing some progress myself. I may not see it completely finish overnight, but no longer can I be okay because guess what? If no one else smells it, you do. You smell the stench of that book, oh my God. Mm. Somebody asks you about your book and then you say, mm. the first thing that it is, is you smelling the stench and you're upset with yourself for not having completed it. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you say to that? If no one else smells it, Ooh. you do. Mm. Mm. Well, mm. off subject here, there is a restaurant <laughs> That I do want to open okay. on the coast. Okay. And it's going to be a seafood restaurant. Okay. And the name of it is going to be, That's Me You Smell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. All right, Bishop Charles, so, all right. <laughs> I refuse to let my procrastination, my stench, my butts, my excuses that Bishop Ooh. Chris talk about kill my vision mm -hmm. the 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 dream that was conceptualized into now a vision that we birthed and that we processed that is around about the 56 minute mark you want to listen to that because then if we allow those things to happen to proc the procrastination to come and, and stunt the growth of our vision, then Bishop Chris starts saying we start questioning ourselves. Wow. Are we really a leader? <laughs> Am I really called for this? Uh -huh. Can I really raise these kids? Wow. Am I really prepared for such a time as now? <laughs> Listen, everyone, this message is setting us up for a horticulture series. Pastor Tanya, this is going to be amazing. This but series is going to really bless and help have, us. I yes. have to jump in here, yes, Bishop yes. Charles. Even when you said that, when you were saying, can I do this? Am I this yeah. and that? The one thing that comes to mind is when you're already walking through it, you start questioning it. And you're already, and you're already doing already it. walking through <laughs> it. How many That's of us so do that already? We're doing it and then question, can we do this? Yeah, you're doing it. And Bishop Chris says, no longer should we allow uh, people to say, oh, you have so much potential. Right. Your compliment. Right, right. What are you doing with that potential energy? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, oh, boy. <laughs> sounds like you said a lot. Yeah. Uh, Bishop is really <laughs> helping us understand uh, uh, the hoarder mm -hmm. prior to 
uh, judging that in- individual right. so that we'll get a better perspective. So these right. perspectives that are being introduced to us, everyone, is really going to help us mm-hmm. understand this series. So mm-hmm. make sure that you're getting mm-hmm. all of the emails. If you're missing Sundays, uh, we understand life is happening. Right. Life does happen. But jump and get those emails that Pastor Tanya is sending out to you. And the recap emails um, that's <laughs> happened, that's coming out and mm-hmm. giving us announcements, Pastor Tanya. Absolutely. All right. And make sure that you're t- tuning in again. You can go on to www www.onechurchlife.com and then as you're there just scroll on down to the contact portion and that's where you can update your information if you have not been receiving your your emails or if you say hey I'm just going to text the church I need to go ahead and text them make sure they're aware then get this information right away you can actually send a text at 910-410 919 919 so now we have our announcements for what's on the how rising for our one church for this week and a couple more down roads uh, months down the road absolutely and this week again we want to say happy father's day happy to all father's of our day. fathers we hope that you've enjoyed your week so far and if you just if you celebrate more than one day that's a great too absolutely but it's really just uh, wonderful to see you all having a great father's day yeah i called my dad today and said happy father's day and on facetime and he was reclining in the man cave chair relaxing it up <laughs> <laughs> happy father's day everyone. happy father's day and don't and don't forget about juneteenth our celebration for juneteenth yes and that's actually a day where we are celebrating our culture freedom of culture yes and one of the ways some of the ways that you can do that is by just supporting a black business or if you say hey i want to support a, a sisterpreneur you yes. can most certainly do that um there are several ways and then if the uh, the the history of the culture and why we came to be that way if you wanted to celebrate that with somebody who doesn't know yeah, it's a great way that. to share that with them mm-hmm. and also be mindful that if you have any business holding at the banks you're gonna have to wait until yeah you're gonna have to wait till tuesday, tuesday because officially <laughs> now the banks are closed on right, today monday right. absolutely so again just be mindful of that and um coming up on the horizon we also want to say congratulations to our very own miss tania williams. williams congratulations Tania-ia. congratulations Tania-ia. Tania-ia. On being crowned and seated as Miss ECSU. We're oh, yes. really excited about her doing that. And God does something really amazing we're for gonna her. We're going to hear her story soon. we're going to hear her story soon. So yes. make sure that you're tuned in for that, all right? Craig, congratulations again, Miss Tania. Congratulations, Miss Tania. And, and also on the horizon is more information about our food truck. Oh, yes. Southern, Southern Seas. Seas. Oh, Southern boy. Seas food truck. Oh, my goodness. We've been getting rave reviews from everyone to to everything simple as chicken as to down to the shrimp. Mm-hmm. So we're really excited about that. And we want to make sure that you all are plugged in and you make sure that you join us during our, our grand opening celebration. We're we're going to have a grand opening in Raleigh, North Carolina. And in Goldsboro, and North, Goldsboro Carolina. North Carolina. So in two places, two locations, double the impact, you guys. So we want to make sure that you're aware of that and that you lock into that. Now, listen, we do send out some information on a weekly basis to all mm-hmm. of our One Church partners. So make sure that you're locked in and you're getting your emails now. If you haven't received emails and you're trying to figure out what, what is she talking about, hey, make sure that you... Go to www.onechurchlife.com and you actually fill out the contact card and you just put in the notes, hey, this is my updated information. We'll make sure that we get that updated Mm -hmm. for you. Or if you would prefer to send a text, you can do that as well by texting us at 919-410-6192. Hey, got it it that time. 919-410-6192. Okay. Make sure that you're communicating with us so we can make sure that you get the information as quickly as possible. That's right. And we do have some other news on the horizon. As you know, we are part of United Fellowship of Churches International. That's where our Bishop Christopher Paul is the presiding prelate bishop. Mm -hmm. And we have some exciting news, but I'm going to let Bishop Charles talk about this. Yes, absolutely, Pastor Tanya. Thank you so much. So Mm -hmm. United Fellowship of Churches will be hosting its annual Holy Convocation in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland uh, this year. And we're really excited about the partnership there. The lineup is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll be celebrating uh, with uh, Archbishop Billings. Archbishop Billings, I wanted to call him also... um, (laughs) 
right. Chief Apostle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be celebrating with him on Friday. But then also what's very special about this year, we will be celebrating and enthroning our bishop mm-hmm. as Archbishop oh of the United Fellowship of Churches and One Church. So oh we're really my. excited oh about oh the my. accomplishments of our yes. bishop and his Episcopal rights there. Yes, so yes. That's really amazing. So One Church, get ready. Get ready. As we are, we are the church that will be supporting yes. this most definitely. Even though we'll be out, out of the, out of the out of town, we're going to actually again be in Maryland. But we want yes. everyone to plug in and join in in this very yes. in this special. It's going to be a hybrid model so mm-hmm. we'll have in person and in studios mm-hmm. set up and then we'll be definitely be streaming as well so you all know we'll be streaming because we are the movies music and miracles, miracles. ministry yes we as are you see there yeah all right <laughs> so again everybody thank you so much these were your announcements yes these were um and just make sure you're giving yourselves accordingly accordingly thank all you right. so much we'll see you back here next week for our weekly recap yep see you next week